What the hell is open foam? Come with me on this journey. My name is Josef Neul and I have 16 years of experience in computational fluid dynamics and 13 years in the open source CFD tool OpenFoam. Now I wish that I knew everything that I'm going to tell you in this video before I started with CFD. So make sure to stay until the end to get the whole picture. So I can very easily answer the question what OpenFoam isn't. OpenFoam is not a software with a GUI just like you would know it from Blender or Microsoft Word or Excel or whatever you come up in your mind uh, where you have a GUI that you open up and then with uh, an educated guesses you can click yourself through that program. In order to fully understand let me show you the steps that you require to uh, conduct a CFD simulation. In this case it's open foam but it is a general workflow for CFD simulations. So first there is the geometry creation. Second setting up the mesh settings. Third doing the actual meshing. Fourth setting up the case and the numerics. Fifth running the actual simulation and six, then post-processing your result. This workflow is almost equivalent to making your own pizza. So theoretically, it should not be more difficult to run your own open foam simulation than making your own pizza. So now I'm going to go through step by step those uh, six steps. And uh, while I'm doing that, I'm also explaining you what OpenFoam actually is. In the first step, in the geometry step, you initialize your project. You create your geometry and take the first step, steps towards your simulation. In the sense of making your own pizza, this would mean to get out all the ingredients to your bench. I already created a video on uh, how to best uh, create your geometry, how you can use this geometry step to unify your boundary condition, naming conventions, your, your meshing conventions. So make sure to check out that video. There is a, a link in the description box below as well as there is a link in the right top corner here and there you can see the details in the on the geometry step. Then, just like you have to know how many water, flour, yeast, olive oil and salt you need for your pizza, you also have to know some settings for your meshing. All the files that I'm showing you in this video can be downloaded via the download link in the description box below the video. And the idea is to provide you with a template for your own meshing and simulation setup. So you can open up those text files and then go to the lines where you this uh, slash slash comment signs uh, in the lines and then focus on the entries in those lines. I'm just going to quickly show you what to do. So first, don't forget to save your STL files in constant try surface. Then open up the block mesh dict, uh, the snappy X mesh dict and the surface feature extract dict in, for example, uh, Notepad++ so you can modify them. And the idea is to, uh, to uncomment the bounding box uh, entries first and then modify it according to your geometry. And then in the second step, also modify the initial resolution of your bounding box mesh. And you can do that by uncommenting it and modifying the entries. Then in the second step, you uh, go to constant try surface and then see how many inlets, outlets and walls you have. And you only uncomment the inlets and outlets and walls that you need. I provided you here with five entries for each, but you only uncomment the one that you need. Also, so, uh, by loading the STLs, then also the first set of refinements, the so-called edge refinement, and also in the second step, the surface refinement. You only focus on the uh, first inlet, the second inlet maybe, then your outlets and the walls that you require and then you modify the refinement level. And the last one is the location in the point. With that you define what is the inside of 
your geometry. And then in the surface feature extract, did you also unselect only the STL files that you uh, that you have in your tri surface folder. Just like you have to use tools, so for example a spoon or your own hands to mix the dough and later do the stretch and fold, you also need tools to generate your mesh. But wait, how can I actually execute meshing? Now for the actual meshing, go in your explorer to your case folder, then uh, control right click and open the Windows terminal in that folder, type in WSL and if you correctly installed OpenFoam, you should be good to go. The tool or utility surface feature extract will extract sharp edges from, from your geometry to have a better quality mesh along edges. In the case of meshing, the tool or utility block mesh will create the initial bounding mesh with the initial refinement. And finally, the tool utility uh, snappy hex mesh uh, dash uh, overwrite will take your STLs, refine your initial mesh around those STLs and snap the mesh to the STLs and throw away any cells which are not needed. With the help of the open.foam file, you can open up your first mesh in Paraview and see whether you chose the correct refinements. If not, then you can re-mesh your geometry. And these tools in OpenFoam are not called spoon or knife or whatever, they are called utilities. And you use these to, for example, generate the mesh. These are executables that don't run simulations, but do something to your case setup and modify your case setup. For the pizza, again, you need tools to cut your toppings for the pizza or even cook them, for example, the tomato sauce. But wait, what does that mean to the case setup? Now you do something very similar during the case setup stage in OpenFoam. So uh, in OpenFoam simulation, you also have to set up your initial and boundary conditions. This can be easily done with wildcards. And I'm going to show you what I mean here. So just open up the files in zero and there you can see that, for example, for the velocity, you have your internal field, your initial conditions and all your boundary conditions. And I uh, set up a list of five inlets and the outlets and the walls with wild cards. And all we have to do is now just select inlet one and two because we only have two inlets in this case and then get rid of three, four and five. We can delete them or just left them commented. And then all we have to take care of is now the velocity u1 and u2, which are the inlet velocities. So let's um, uncomment them and then modify the value. So the first one is fine for me with 100, and then the second one I change to 003 because that is the direction of the inlet where I expect the inlet velocity to come from. Okay, so then let's save it, then let's go to the pressure. This template was already preset up, so you don't have to change anything if you use the naming convention. Then also the same in the new T, the turbulent viscosity file, you don't have to do anything. Same for the turbulent kinetic energy. I want to point out that we use 5% uh, inlet uh, intensity. And then for epsilon, we have to do the same as what we did for the velocity. Uh, um, just select inlet one and two and then the mixing length one and two in this case and then what we have to add here is the diameter or at least the hydraulic diameter of the inlet so the first one is four and the second one is two Let's save this and then we can progress with the case setup. And you can see that I provide you these templates to modify for your case. So let's open up the two files in constant. Here we define the K epsilon model and then we also define the kinematic viscosity of air. So you don't have to touch this if you are using air as your fluid. Then for the numerics in system, we open up control dict and FV schemes and FV solutions. And the, the numeric settings in the FV schemes and FV solutions are pre set up for you for a steady state simulation. 
we, in the, uh, we assume a first order scheme with upwind. If you are interested in higher order scheme, there is going to be a, a link in the description box below for more information. The rest you don't have to touch, FV solution you can leave as you want and then the only things that we may want to change in control dict is the, the end time, so how many iterations we want to have in our steady state simulation and how often we want to write out. So here we want to write out every 100 iteration of our simulation and that is really it. But wait, why do you give us steady state templates? Now the reason for providing you with a template for a steady state simulation are two polls that I did on YouTube and in both polls two weeks ago and over a year ago, almost half of you use simple foam, which means the steady state incompressible solver of open foam for your simulation. So this topic seems to be the most relevant to you. Now, if you want to have templates for the transient single phase and incompressible solver pimple foam and for the multi-phase solver interfoam, which are second and the third in the list of popularity, just let me know in the comment section below and I'm happy to set up at some point those for you as well. Now, during the case setup stage, you also may need some uh, utilities to pre-process your case. In this case, we didn't do that, but you may. And once you set up your case, you are finished with your topping, so to say, then all we have to do is now bake our pizza or bake our simulation, which means to run the simulation. Now, and this is the easy part. So you have all you have to do is bring out your so-called solver, which is also an application, and then run that solver. In this case, for the steady state simulation, the solver is called Simple Foam, and this is what you type into your terminal and press enter, and then the simulation starts. Okay, so now I hope you understand these tools, the applications, which are the utilities, as well as the solvers. But there is one other thing that I have to mention here, and these are the libraries. So libraries are, for example, the turbulence model is a library. And the multiple solvers, so for example, the steady state, incompressible solver, simple foam loads that library of turbulence models, but also the transient version of the incompressible solvers, uh, pimple foam loads the turbulent library. So does the multi-phase solver. But for example, simple foam doesn't load the multi-phase um, libraries or uh, simple form doesn't load any particle or combustion libraries and why you ask why you don't load all available models at once because you don't want to drag along unneeded models and once your simulation stopped, then you can go to post-processing by clicking on the open.foam file. You can open up your simulation results and paraview and post-process them as you see fit. And this is really nothing else than just eating your delicious pizza. So I hope now you get what I mean. OpenFoam is not one software with a GUI, it is rather a collection of executables and libraries, so the utilities, the solvers and the libraries. It is like you have being a chef and you have different knives for different cuts of meats, of vegetables, of fishes and you have also other utilities like a spoon or your kitchen machine So and you have to know how to utilize them. So in open foam, you have to know what you are doing. Just like while cooking, no one is going to cut your tomatoes, no one is going to do the dough for you. If you don't want to do that, then you can buy the pre-prepared meals in the uh, store. If you like to tinker around and set up settings yourself, and so, uh, which means do your own food, then open foam is for you. And this is what open foam is, this collection of tools so you can make your own pizza. If you want to know more how you can start with geometric creation, here is a video where I explain exactly that.